On behalf of the Board of Directors, I'm proud to convey our appreciation and gratitude to the dedication and hard work of Kelly and the entire Family Smart team. Over 20 years ago, we committed ourselves to child and youth mental health, and our commitment has only grown over time. Exceptional care and caring are what children, youth, and families deserve. In this past year, with the ongoing pandemic, the disruption to the lives of kids and families were felt at all levels with friends, school, work, extended family, sports, and so on. As an organization focused on families, we felt it too. And we did even more to connect families this past year and support them. Children and their parents need to be helped sooner. We have new data that shows that many parents first noticed their kids were struggling between the ages of four to nine, but often didn't or couldn't get the help they needed until those kids were teenagers. In this past year, we've made helping families sooner a priority. Lastly, we believe that the impacts of the pandemic on the mental health of kids is not over. As an organization, we will continue to help them and advocate for their mental health needs. As the founder and CEO of Family Smart, I am humbled every single day by the ability of young people and families to get up and keep going, especially when things are hard. Kids and families have experienced tremendous stress and change in this last year and a half. And for many of them, it was unprecedented. It's just been really hard. And when times are hard, it's even more important to be connected to people who care. Caring is in Family Smart's DNA. We see you, we are you, and we're here for you. We care about you. And being there for families and young people this past year has meant more than just offering virtual services. To us, it's meant more about reaching out and reaching back to families in order to let them know that they're not alone and to see how we can help them. We know they need help. Family Smart is cost free and barrier free. We offer something more than others. Um, it's our experience as families and our knowledge of mental health services because we've navigated and used child and youth mental health services. And we have a knowing that families recognize and they feel when they connect with us. When you connect with Family Smart, you're connecting with people who've experienced mental health and or substance use challenges as either young people or as parents of children and youth who've struggled. We are families and we serve families. This year, we are so proud of the resiliency of the young people and families who make up the Family Smart staff team. During a very difficult year, they have been responsive, creative, and generous for real. Their commitment to making sure that other young people and families are offered support and don't feel so alone never changed even when the pandemic made things feel extra hard. Every part of the organization was responsive to the pandemic. Beginning with our frontline team, being responsive to what the family in front of them needed, to our programs and operations team, who collaborated and continuously evaluated how our work and services were being offered so that families and caregivers' needs and our contract deliverables were being met. Every month this year, we reached out to families and to community partners to offer peer support and share information about our work. We put infrastructure in place to support the adaptation, growth, and evaluation of our people and programs to ensure that our services were not only being offered, but were the quality that we are proud of and know that families and caregivers deserve. As parents and caregivers, we don't always know what to do when our kids are struggling. Our team of parent peer support workers come alongside families when they are having a hard time with their child or youth mental health. What sets Family Smart's Parent Peer Support Program apart is that we offer support from a place of understanding. We get it. We are committed to providing young people, parents, and caregivers with exceptional care, with no barriers, whether that support comes from a member of our community team or those that work in on-site locations. 
This year, we have intentionally sought out families and caregivers. In the community, we increased our outreach efforts to child and youth mental health teams, school-aged programs, physicians, and other community organizations serving families. When the pandemic made it impossible for our on-site team to safely work in person in the healthcare settings and hospital settings we are contracted to provide services in, we worked with our funding partners to reimagine how to work with clinical teams and offer peer support services remotely. We're so grateful for our strong working relationships with our partners at BC Children's Hospital's Kelty Mental Health Resource Centre, at CASA Family Services in Edmonton, at Surrey Memorial Hospital's CAPSU and APU, and at Fraser Health's ADTP, and that together we were able to quickly adapt our service offerings so that young people and families were consistently offered peer support when they reached out. This year, we met with parents and caregivers by phone, video conference, and email. We met in outdoor spaces, we went for walks, we set up resource tables outside of schools and CYMH offices. We wore masks. We sat beside and talked with youth doing homework, doing the hard work of recovery. We played a game and we offered understanding. Every day we worked hard to make sure that young people and families know how much they matter to us and that we are here to help if and when they need it. This year, we created health literacy tools and resources for families and caregivers through three different programs, In the Know, Help for the Hard Times Workshops, and May 7th National Child and Youth Mental Health Day. We know that health literacy is more than just providing information and knowledge. It is also about how to help parents and caregivers know what they can do and what they can try at home with their own families. During a time with many unknowns, we moved all of our health literacy events online without any disruption to our scheduled events. We offered a fall and winter video event series for parents and caregivers to connect and learn on topics such as eating disorders, anxiety, and what to do when our kids can't go to school. We partnered with Jesse's Legacy and Anxiety Canada to create two of these video resources. Our Help for the Hard Times workshop series for parents and caregivers who have a child or youth inpatient in a psychiatric unit was expanded this year and was offered in three different health regions. Our May 7th I Care About You message resonated with people across Canada and was needed more than ever. We partnered with Karen Peters at Thrive Life, Jack.org, and Glen Eagle Secondary School in Coquitlam to offer presentations and resources for homes, communities, and schools. This year brought about big changes. Our training that focuses on helping people work well together went from in-person only to now include interactive online sessions. This was no small feat. It took many members of our team, filming, training facilitators, learning new curriculum platforms, all while learning new technology, so we could do this well. We have been able to bring together service providers, families, and young adults from all over the province to learn with and from each other. To do this, we needed to connect with young people to create content to really speak to their experiences. Our youth video project enabled us to have their voices throughout our online training, informing others what it sounds like, looks like, and feels like when we put into practice the skills needed to work well together. We are excited that by including online training, we will be more accessible to people across the country. We have also had an increase in the number of service providers reaching out to us for consultation. Ensuring family and youth voices are reflected in their words and products shows the importance of our Together-Centred approach. The relationships we are building with service providers to do this work together has been a significant addition to the work we do. We are so proud of what we've been able to accomplish to bring people together. When in-person isn't possible, caring connections always are. Thank you. Thank you.